Hey everybody, welcome. It's Motivational Monday today. We got a special edition. Last week, I got caught up. Remember, I was watching all your messages come. I got so caught up, Pastor Tim, watching these messages coming from all over the yeah. world. It just, I couldn't stay on point. <laughs> Hi, we're from Sweden. Hi, we're from Finland. It's incredible. It's like, oh man, it's so good. So we're not going to do that today. I'm glad for your comments, but I'm not going to pay attention to those because I want you to experience something really special today. Pastor Tim Timberlake is with us. He's the senior pastor here at Celebration Church at the Mothership, the, the arena, and he is large and in charge. And I wanted you to hear from him today. He's got a message, a brand new book. And um, But for some of you, uh, he is not uh, someone that you have known before. Mm -hmm. And he's really a special guy. He and his wife and their, their very ambitious <laughs> young son uh, who has no problem with self-identity. No, no problem. He, he walks into a room. Lights off. Right, yeah. mm, I want all eyes here. Yeah, it's great. And uh, But I'd, I'd like you to get to know Pastor Tim and the message that he's sending out uh, just this week, release of a brand new book. So, Pastor Tim, welcome to Motivational Monday. Thank you so much, Pastor Paul, for having me on. Yeah, yeah that's it's great. Honor. It's a blessing. It's an honor. So why don't you uh, briefly tell us uh, where you came from, who mm -hmm. you are, and I already know what you do, yeah, kind of. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I'm from a little city called Creedmoor, North Carolina, and it's right outside of Raleigh, Durham. Your whole life? Yeah. Uh, most of my life. Okay. So born in North Carolina, raised in North Carolina, kind of bounced around after high school uh, to a few different cities, Hampton, Virginia, Detroit, Michigan, okay. and then back home. Uh, and, you know, a little bit about my upbringing. My parents were pastors and uh, established and planted in the same city that my father grew up in. And uh, he started off as a, a Baptist preacher of a church of nine people. Good place to start. <laughs> Baptist, good place to start. That's it, man. Mm -hmm. And he started to teach the word of God. And, you know, in our community, that was unheard of. And as he began to teach the word of God and started to teach on really the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, we started uh -oh. to see our church, man, just kind of take off. And uh, we went from nine people to 36 people, from 36 people to 500 people, Whoa. from 500 people to 2,000 people from 2,000 people to 5,000 people. And it just continued to grow exponentially. And so at the time, he and my mom, they went on worldwide television. And at the time, the only other African-American pastor on TV was Dr. Fred Casey Price. Wow, who we just Yeah, just, just, just lost. Graduated. Yeah, just graduated, went on to, you know, the, the big school in the sky, man. And so he and my dad, were the first African-American pastors on national television. And uh, because of that, people started to flock to our church from all over the world. Of course. And uh, we saw God do incredible things in a city of 2,400 people. Our church outgrew the population of the city. That's unheard of. And so uh, things continued to grow and expand and my parents continued to travel and teach uh, on relationships and marriages and family mm. and really kind of identify their lane uh, with wholeness and, and really uh, the family and relationships and how we can utilize and, and really establish a healthy relationship with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So what, yeah. what brand of Baptist, because this sounds very familiar. Yeah, so they, they, they stock stills down. In they, they started off as First Baptist, and as they began to teach and as they began to really expound on the Holy Spirit, they quickly got kicked out of that. And they became non-denominational. <laughs> the best left foot of fellowship. That's right. That's it. And so they, they, they established, you know, the church Christian Faith Center. And it was a non-denominational church. And in 1997, at the height of the ministry, uh, my dad was diagnosed with terminal throat cancer. No. And they gave him three weeks to live. Um, but they also gave him an option to have an experimental uh, surgery. 
And they told him, you know, the chances of his survival were very slim. And so he opted for that. And they were able to remove a tumor from his throat the size of a chipmunk. Oh. Yeah. That, that's a big. That's, it's a big tumor. And so in doing so, they had to remove a quarter of his tongue. And so he was no longer able to eat or drink through his mouth. He was fed through a G-tube for the remainder of his life. Oh, man. And so he fought for uh, five years. And on my 18th birthday, he sent me down, Pastor Paul, and he began to really prophesy over me what would uh, be in my future and what I was going to walk into and mm. the things that he foresaw God doing in and through my life through the assignment that God had placed on me. And at the time, I, I didn't want to be a part of church. I didn't have any desire to really serve God because of what I saw him going through. Wow. And he just called out of me, man, for five hours, what it was that God desired. And he tapped my leg, he went upstairs, he got in his bed, he went to sleep. And the next morning, 2 a.m., my mom knocks on the door. She says, Tim, I need you to help me get your dad out of bed. He's not responding. And I go downstairs and I pull him out of bed and he's already transitioned. And the last conversation that I had with him was him telling me what it was that God had in store for me. And, and really the catalyst for this project, the Power of 1440 comes from that moment because I wasn't really paying attention. Mm. I wasn't really leaning into the conversation with intention because I thought I had more time. So you, you didn't take out your smartphone and record what your dad <laughs> no, was no. prophesying. No, at the time, it would have been a cassette player. <laughs> at least it wasn't an agent. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but I, I know, Pastor Tim, yeah. that what you're saying right now mm. is speaking to the heart mm -hmm. of so many mm -hmm. who are watching yeah. and, and saying, I wish I had yeah. a dad. Yeah like that mm -hmm. i'm uh, this is this is something that so hits us mm -hmm. all i don't care if you're 70 year old like me or seven mm -hmm. the voice of a fa a that's godly it. father that's it who will raise you up and and like we read in the scriptures like Jacob lay his That's hands it. on his children mm -hmm. and prophesy. We have chapters, right, yeah. in the book of Genesis where Jacob, uh, later called Israel, is prophesying over all of his sons yeah. what they are, who they'll be. Wow, man, yeah. what a... But you weren't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. And, you know, he he knew that his time was drawing near. The week prior to that... Uh, my mom called me. I was in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. She said, I need you to come home. Your dad passed. And so I rush home and I get home, Pastor Paul, and he's sitting up in his bed. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I thought you, <laughs> you passed. And he looks at me and he says, I couldn't leave until I saw you become a man. Oh, man. You're killing me. <laughs> and, and, you know, even even yet and still with something like that, if we're not careful, we still don't take the opportunity to get the most out of moments like that. And I just, I just didn't, you know, he was this larger than life figure for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I saw him overcome a lot. And so my mentality was, I still got some years left. Mm -hmm. And that day on my 18th birthday, he knew this was it. And so I'm going to pour almost like Paul, you know, what Paul says, I pour my life up and I tilt my life until the last drop. He understood this is it. This is the conversation that I'm going to literally pour my life into this, this young, ignorant fool <laughs> and pray <laughs> that something sticks. Yeah. And, you know, every, every, everything that he said, I can't remember, but I do remember a, a portion of it. And some of the stuff that he, he downloaded into me, uh, still sticks with me to this day. And it developed who I am today as a leader. And, and so for those of you that are watching, I just I want you to know that even with your children and your grandchildren, um, the words that you say are seeds into their destiny and their future. And they they make a huge difference and a huge impact. I know it did for me. Just 
pick the thought right out of my head. Yeah. You know, it's so important what we're listening to. That's it. Who we're listening to. Mm -hmm. And so those those seeds, because seeds can only produce what they are. That's it. You know, so the seeds of what you're listening to, you say, oh, I can handle this, or that doesn't make much of a difference. Mm -hmm. It just bounces off me. Mm -hmm. No, those seeds are equipped That's it. to reproduce after their own kind That's it. right from page one of our Bibles. That is so true. It, it's a law of creation that everything will produce after its own mm -hmm. kind. So those seeds that your dad sowed mm -hmm. into the soil of your life, whether you heard them all, whether mm -hmm. you received them all, which you're telling us you didn't, yeah. you couldn't, right. they are there, they are waiting for an appointed mm -hmm. time. The, the shell, the casing mm -hmm. cracks open, it sends down a root and it will produce. Yeah. Isn't that, you know, the flip side why some of us, after years of walking with the Lord, That's so true. we're dealing with stuff. I said, well, how is this showing up I again? Know. It's because of seeds that you allowed to be planted yeah. through the gates, the mm -hmm. different gates, huh? the eyes, the ears, mm -hmm. the, the senses that are still reproducing and they're waiting mm -hmm. for an opportune time. Mm -hmm. This is Motivational Monday. I'm praying that you're being motivated like I am. Mm -hmm. uh, we we just we need a part two or yeah, part, part for sure. three. This Absolutely, is just, this is way too good <laughs> yeah. and way too short. So okay, I I interrupted. No, you. no, but but one of the things that I've really been processing and thinking through, to your point, is the voice that we listen to determines the destiny that we experience. Say that again. The voice that we listen to determines the destiny that we experience. It's the voice that we trust that really determine the doors that we walk through or the doors that limit us from achieving and reaching what Jesus desires for us to achieve. And so for for me, it was it was limited not by the restrictions of my father and our heavenly father, but it was limited by my perspective mm. of life. And it wasn't until, you know, my dad had transitioned from this life to the next. And, and really I had this, this moment with God in my apartment in Hampton, Virginia. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back from a basketball game, Pastor Paul, and sitting on the edge of my bed and I fall asleep. And when I wake up, I'm standing on this stage in front of a sea full of people. Mm. and people as far as I could see. And I looked down at my hands and there's blood coming from my hands. Mm. And I heard the voice of God say, the longer you run from what you've been called to do, the blood of all of these people you could have influenced will be held to your account. And I woke up and I called my mom, freaked out of my mind. <laughs> and How I, old are you at this point? I'm 18. Still, still 18. And so I, I call her and I tell her verbatim what I heard. And she starts laughing. And I'm like, what are you laughing at? This is crazy. This is creepy. And she says, that's the same exact thing God told your father when he called him in the ministry. Wow. That week, I left Hampton University. I moved to Detroit, finished up at Bible College, got my degree there, moved back home and started pastoring the church that they planted at 20 years old. And that was 17 years ago in January. At 20. 20 years old. Yep. Yikes. <laughs> man, I hope you had some heavy lifters. Oh, man. I, I, I Not only did I have some heavy lifters, I, I had sound counsel speaking into me and, and helping me. And my mom was there. And, you know, she is the wisest woman we've heard her speak yeah inside. she is no lightweight no no she she so she would be uh really her and my dad were the first ones to go on national television and tag team preach wow. the first african-american woman to go on national and worldwide television to preach the gospel of jesus what, christ what year this was uh, man this is mid 70s wow and this is in the mid 70s and so, you know, they, they carried this on and, and they, they did it at such a level of, of integrity and character that it just it drew people in and allowed people to see you can have fun with God. 
Mm. You can have a healthy marriage. You can have a healthy relationship with your kids and, and not be out of the context of what God desires for us as his family, because that's what we're here for. Mm. And, you know, those things started to come back in me and to the surface after some years. You know, like you said, those seeds, they begin to blossom, they begin to bloom, they begin to flourish on the inside of me. And so with what I had reproducing in me, those seeds, I wanted to share those with people and, and really felt like God had an assignment for my life to add value to people's lives. Mm. And so, you know, for 17 years, Pastor Paul, you know, I, I've made it an effort to pour my life into as many people as possible. You know, and it's been um, what I like to call the glorious grind. You mm. know, it is it is challenging. No, no, this is not coffee, but it's strong. Full flavor. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it, it has seasons just like everything else where you, you ask yourself, man, OK, God, what does this look like? How does this happen in, in each step? Day by day, he begins to unfold. He begins to peel back another layer and show us, okay, this is what I want for you today. This is what I want for you in this moment. This is what I want for you in this season. Mm -hmm. And that's where this book comes from. That's that's the catalyst for it. That's the really the birthing ground for it. Uh, the power of 1440. Um, that's 1440 minutes in every single day. And I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice transition yeah. <laughs> because uh, we, we want to make sure, you know, we were talking about Forward by John C. Maxwell. Man, <laughs> and I, was, I was looking through here. The, the first chapter is all people <laughs> that you've heard of that are saying you should read this book. <laughs> So you're you're just about to to release this thing. Yes, sir. Making the most of every minute in a day. Remember we're talking about seeds. Mm -hmm. Words are are seeds. Thoughts are seeds. What people say are seeds. What you watch are seeds. What you listen to are seeds. This is another way of getting some really good seeds into the ground of your life. So Tell us about this, the power of 1440. Yeah, so one of the things that I've kind of discovered and seen in life, we either live in the regrets of our past okay. or the hopes of our future. We really don't take an opportunity to squeeze the most out of today. And so when we're thinking about yesterday, we're thinking about yesterday right now. When we think about tomorrow, we're thinking about tomorrow right now. And so why not lean into the present moment? Why not lean into the present time and invest in now to get the most out of it? Because what we do now determines the harvest we receive in our future. Mm. And so that, that to me was something that I had to learn the hard way. That was something that I had to, to discover and really, um, kind of grow up in. And so I want to take the knots that I have on my head, the the times that I hit my head on the wall, and the times that I was stalled at a wall, put it in a book, give it to people so that they could avoid the same wall that kept me from walking into some things in the time that I believe God desired for it. Mm. You, you got so much running through my brain here. <laughs> I, I have to bite my lip because I want our friends to hear from you. But man, oh man, oh man. I mean, what does the, the Apostle Paul says? Mm -hmm. Make the most of every opportunity, that's it. right? I'm sure that's in here yep, somewhere. It is. Based on the title. Because the days are evil. Yep. And I remember times in my life that were uncomfortable. Mm -hmm that were pressured. I may have been in a not so comfortable situation, ministering in another language, mm -hmm. climbing out of a bed in a really not so much fun <laughs> hotel and saying to myself, don't miss yeah. the opportunity, make the most of this opportunity, live in the moment because you, before you know it, it's gone. That's it. You'll be looking back at it and we, will have missed what God wanted to do, mm -hmm. what he wanted to say. That, that is so 
Good. I'm glad to hear that I've actually been operating in some of this before yeah, I read your book. Sure. <laughs> that encourages me. Yeah, and, and, it's Motivational and, Monday. Yes, I want to motivate <laughs> you to some of this. So take us, um, we, we got a few. First of all, how, mm -hmm. where do we get a hold of this? Uh, you can go to the power of 1440.com and you can pre-order it or you can purchase it and you can download a free chapter of it. Uh, right now. And so, you know, I encourage you to do it. And as we have been talking about it, I, I believe and I know uh, that it will add value to your life. And so, you know, if you uh, download the free chapter, read it, and it touches you and blesses you, then purchase a copy of it. Yeah, nice. Well, we are also going to be carrying this on our website, wilburministries.com, you'll be able to get a copy there, and all the proceeds will go back to where they belong. And uh, we'll be sharing this on some of our other broadcasts. You'll see this again on Worship Wednesday, because doing the Word of God in your life is really the heart of worship. Yeah. Huh? And and so you'll you'll see it again. We'll we'll be. Um, offering this to you on Motivational Monday, Worship Wednesday, Shabbat in your home, and we'll have it on all of our, it'll be on our uh, app, wilburministries.com. And uh, so this is such, man, such good stuff. I didn't really know anything <laughs> about your story, <laughs> but I've just seen you in the preaching mode yes, sir. here at church. Um, an amazing gift in communication. Thank you. Passionate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it comes out of a reality of life, you know, in a, in a day where there is so much, mm -hmm. we can watch this huge swath of this person and mm -hmm. that person, mm -hmm. and you don't know. Maybe they're just really good mm -hmm. at communicating. Right. And they're, <laughs> They're giving you a bunch of weeds. Right. You know, you don't know. Is this person actually who right. they say they For are? Sure. Are they living out of are they telling me what they've lived out of? Yeah. And you know, every once in a while we get these huge disappointments yeah. from people that have told us something different mm -hmm. from what they're living. But we know that that is not the same right. with you. We've we've known you now for over a year, mm -hmm. watched you and really appreciated I appreciate what you. God has deposited in you. Grateful for you all. Uh, yeah, we're, we're really grateful. So I want to encourage you to go ahead and log on. What's that website again? Thepowerof1440.com. Thepowerof1440.com. It's the title of the book. 1440 is, was that a year? It's the minutes in a day. Okay. I was concerned that might have been the year I was born. No, no, no. no 1440. <laughs> Some days it feels like right after. Lincoln was oh, hey, how did I get here? 1440, the number of minutes in a day. And I can tell, friends, by the number of people who say what they are and tell us uh, who have recommended this, that this will really Bless your life. So that's the motivation for today. I want to motivate you. <laughs> Log on to the power of 1440. No dots, no dashes, just as it is here. Power1440.com. And from there, it's a bunch of things that they can download and free chapters and the book and some assets and things like that, that I believe will really bless your life. Mm. And that's the motivation here. Um, Pastor Tim has a message, as you can tell, and he wants to motivate you to love and good deeds. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that as soon as we close, he's going to autograph this one for to sure, me. 100%. And I will pay full retail, which <laughs> no, is no, very no, no. unjoyous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a joke we have <laughs> in the Jewish community. <laughs> We can end with this. You know, we know why God created Jews, right? To reflect the glory and to be the priests among the nations. 
which we have seldom done. But the reason God made Gentiles is so that someone will pay full retail. All right? But I am going to be very one man here, and I'm investing. I'm paying retail for this because I know there's some good seed in here. You've really moved me in a lot of Thank emotions you. today. When you start talking about father yeah. and dad and the transfer and mm -hmm. generational and anointing, and that hits every one of us on just the foundational mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. of our lives. I believe it's the cry of our generation mm -hmm. that God has given to us. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for today. And uh, I'm, my, my soul is a little weepy right now, but I, I know that I'm gonna get some, some good Kleenex time reading this book, I want to encourage you one more time, The Power of 1440.com. And don't just download the free, come on, don't just <laughs> download the free chapter and say, okay, I got the essence of it. That's just a tease. The rest of the seed that will help you produce good fruit in your life is the rest of the book. So pay full retail, be a good one new man, huh? And I know this is really going to bless you. We're going to have Pastor Tim back very soon because Thank there's you. so much here. Uh, we haven't even scratched the surface <laughs> of this good ground. Thank you. That your dad sowed in by the power of the Spirit. Yes, sir. So before we um, depart today, I want to leave you with a blessing. May the Lord bless mm -hmm. you and keep you. Yovarechacha Adonai v'yishmerecha. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Ya'er Adonai panavelecha vichunecha. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Yisa Adonai panavelecha ve'asemlecha shalom. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah, he is the prince of all peace. And I pray that the Lord will really bless the rest of your day today, the rest of your life. Yes. Come join us again. Worship Wednesday coming up, Shabbat in your home. And uh, and I know that once you get a hold of this, it's going to shake your little world. I'm looking forward to it. God bless you. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.